Long before the birth of light, there was darkness. You know, you get Anthony Hopkins to be in your comic book movie and you're gonna have him narrate. Same rules apply to Morgan Freeman and Patrick Stewart. <laughs> The cursed are a pretty inventive foe, using whatever they're wearing to transform them into a giant terrifying monster. Malekith sacrificed his own people in a desperate attempt to lay waste to Asgard's army. So is there like a checkbox on the Dark Elf military application, willing to be sacrificed so one dude will live? Or is this just a risk you take when your leader won't stop talking about darkness? I'm reminded right from the get-go how amazing the costuming in Thor is. It isn't easy to give otherworldly beings believable attire that still looks tangible, but they really nail it in the Thor films over and over. Wherever you go, there's war. I went down to Midgard to rule the people of Earth as a benevolent god. I'm always going to give the MCU credit for this connected universe. Based on box office, most everyone watching this movie saw Avengers. But even if you didn't, you get a quick recap with Odin questioning what Loki did and Loki just defending his actions rather than dumping exposition. It is my birthright. Your birthright! What's to die? Cast out onto a frozen rock. Quick recap of Thor 1, too. It's not that I don't love our little talks, it's just... I don't love them. Honesty. This is Vanaheim, Hogan's realm that's being attacked by the Marauders who are clearly from the steampunk realm. Now, that's an entrance. I mean, that's an entrance. I accept your surrender. <laughs> you guys like that? I'm here all week. And for such a small amount of time spent on Vanaheim, they built a believable world with custom looking yurts, whatever all this stuff is, and giant structures in the distance that make it clear this isn't Kansas. You must think I'm a piece of bread that needs to be buttered so heavily. Simile win. You'd be better served by what lies in front of you. And some subtle Yenta ing. Chris Hemsworth's workout routine. See, 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 see. You know, I'll just stay here and say see boss alone. Risky move to make the guy who isn't Thor, guy we'll never like. In fact, guy we hate for not being Thor, at least for Jane's sake. Not an unlikable guy. Instead, he's funny and quick-witted and Jane should probably date him. But, but don't, because Thor. You even feel bad for him. Eventually the distance killed it. And, and the fact that she, uh, she kept sleeping with other dudes. Stellan Skarsgård's workout routine? Yeah, I mean, the dude's in his 60s, so... Also, it's not lost on me that Bootstrap Bill is running around a historical monument naked. Stellan Skarsgård doesn't even care. Hey, those kids built their own little Stonehenge out of shipping containers. Fun with gravity and phasing through dimensional portals has piqued my interest. Uh-oh, Swan Queen is having another one of her hallucinations. I mean, really, it even sounds like birds. Yeah, ether's fine. Cake would be better. Let's travel through portals without cake. Or a weighted companion cube. The universe hasn't seen this marvel since before my watch began. That's a little self-congratulatory there, Idris. I don't think we can give you all the credit. That'd be like giving Chris Pine all the credit for DC. But I am glad to see they gave Heimdall a little more space in his newly built observatory. He earns it later. Who needs umbrellas when you've got ether running through your veins? Or energy? Jane. <laughs> Running to each other's arms after an absence, cliche dodge. Twice. The nine realms erupted into chaos. Wars were raging. Marauders were pillaging. I had to put an end to the slaughter. As excuses go, it's not terrible. Leniency. You were in New York. Yeah, dark matter is expensive stuff, and I really needed some shawarma time with the boys. And, and that one girl. But I do know this. What? I know. You do? Do what? What? <laughs> Love, spectation, subversion. So I'm mostly in everything. How's space? Space is fine. Taking an interest in your friend's significant other. Who needs an anti-intruder force field when you've got ether running through your energy? Soul? There is one positive to come out of the battle for New York. Thor doesn't need to worry about anyone seeing him teleport or transport or apparate, or use his TARDIS or portal gun or Stargate whenever he feels like it. And I am still feeling Bifrost teleportation. Psychedelic colors getting me all hyped up for Ragnarok. We have to do that again. And, ha, of course an astrophysicist is going to be stoked to travel through something she thought was only theoretical a few years ago. Welcome to Asgard. No need to feel creeped out. You're only one of the ten trillion that I spy on daily. It is truly beautiful. Oh my goodness. This is at least my fourth viewing of this film, and I'm just now realizing that Malekith is Doctor Who. It's everything that he does with his face and mouth right here that made me finally recognize him, and I'm ashamed. I mean, no, I'm impressed, because I had no clue. For the non-Hoovians, he's Raymond Kalitri from Gone in 60 Seconds, Destro from G.I. Joe, or Major West from 28 Days Later, the leader of the military bros at the end. Christopher Eccleston, you, you 
got something here. That's a quantum field generator, isn't it? It's a soul forge. Does the soul forge transfer molecular energy from one place to another? Yes. Quantum field generator. This is the perfect example of what Thor was talking about in the original, with magic and science being the same thing to the Asgardians. Soul forge, quantum field generator, it's all the same stuff. It's a soul forge. What would you know about souls, Borg Queen? Yeah, that's the Borg Queen from yeah. First Contact. She does not belong here in Asgard any more than a goat belongs at a banquet table. Well, I'm... I know very well who you are, Jane Foster. You told your dad about me? Seeing the silver linings. Asgard was doing animated picture books millennia before Hogwarts. One of the really fun things about Asgard and the Thor movies in general is the constant melding of new and old. The contrast between their outfits and what appear to be seriously old structures against technology way beyond what we have with force fields and magical holograms. You know I'm a fan of episode two, but I'm still happy Padme doesn't have to listen to anyone wax poetic about sand. I like the way you explain things. You mean the way he Thorsplains things? First, definitely very Loki of Loki to just be hanging out, playing catch, finally getting into that book while people are dying and generally crazy things are happening. Second, gotta give Adewale Akinu, Mr. Echo, sorry man, I shouldn't even try. Gotta give him crazy props for what he's wearing right now. 100% practical outfit and makeup, yet his eyes still pierce your soul. <laughs> yep. Ladies, there's enough Thor to go around. And just in case anyone was screaming that the Bifrost was destroyed, there's the crack from where they rebuilt it. <laughs> yep, pretty much the most badass good guy thing I've seen in a while. Idris Elba is always a win. When it comes to ships attacking a city, even if you're rooting against them, it still doesn't get much cooler than knife-like ships weaving in and out of buildings, literally cutting down gun towers, being all around nearly impossible to shoot, and then knocking down pillars while taking very little damage. And I love the shift in size perspective now that there are people in frame. And these are just the small ships that break off from the big ships. Eh, that's a pretty badass bad guy entrance. Man, the Dark Elves have all the best tech and weapons. I'm not condoning gravity crushing grenades or whatever the heck that is but come on, it's pretty sick. Although I do strive to achieve gravity grenading my enemy's throne levels of petty. Badass good girl. Dang, third badass moment in this movie. Love that Frigga's a better combatant than Malachi. He barely gets a hit in. And in this one short scene, you see where Thor gets his love of a good fight and Loki gets his trickery and knife skills. Or maybe Malachi is just being respectful. You have taken something, child. Give it back. I'll take this opportunity to say that while Chris Eccleston's voice and accent are powerful enough without any effects, Malekith's voice does give him a very mystical and threatening presence. And you can still hear pieces of the Doctor in there. Witch! Poor Malekith can't escape people messing up one side of his face, but now he looks like his comic self. Becoming your own constellation adds a whole new level to the Norse funeral, which through research I found out that Vikings didn't really do this. So inadvertent history lesson? More importantly, everything about this funeral is stunning and somber. Not likely too many people's favorite Marvel score, but Brian Tyler's music really captures the sorrow of this scene. What an authentic moment of actually getting to see how Loki feels for once, confirming that he absolutely loved his mother. Apparently Eric is teaching them about the multiverse in Earth 616. Who needs a crystal ball when you've got ether running through your soul? Or eyeballs? And gravity, light, and even matter is crashing from one world to the other. Shoe sizing lessons. Can I have my shoe back? A scud in place. And how many of our men shall fall on theirs? As many as are needed! Such an opposing scene from the first film where Thor yells and acts like a child and gets banished because of it. He's come a long way and actually keeps his cool more than his father. What do you require of me? Heimdall's pretty much always ready to help Thor. But a bit of a slowdown in this film is kind of like a setup for a heist. Lesser actors can make these scenes drag and would have a hard time carrying the story. But get Hiddleston, Elba, and Hemsworth together and we're glued to the screen. Not to mention the amazingly beautiful lighting in this shot. You help me escape Asgard and I will grant it to you. Vengeance. I don't know. That's an awful lot like a vengeance, which I'll have no part of. Are you sure you wouldn't rather just punch your way out? That's more this guy's MO. Hey, want to have a rousing discussion about truth? But here I am again giving Chris Evans a bunch of praise outside of his own movie. Because come on, he's loving this. It takes some expertise to act like someone acting like you. Love that even the music gets cappy. You may have heard. That was for New York. All right, but Loki and the Earth are even now. Betray, and I'll kill you. If you even think about betraying him, 
You'll kill me? Nice to know two out of the Warriors three have Thor's back. Not sure what new Fandral's problem is. You must have missed something. No, I didn't. I'm pressing every button on this thing. No, don't hit it. Just press it gently. I am pressing it gently. Stop. Ah, brotherly love. No matter how long your brother's for, this bickering sounds just about the same. I think you missed a color. Shut up. Not a terrible plan. Leaving with the crash ship would be the last thing anyone would expect Thor to do. Trickery is obviously more Loki's thing. And I'm not complaining about the beautiful flyover Asgard we get as a result. Then to find out it was all a diversion to get onto the other ship so Loki could use his special portal off world. New Fangel does get his save the day moment. Some real magician stage presence there, Loki. Was that her last expression? Trust? We let her die? What help were you and yourself who put me there? You get the feeling this may be the first time these two brothers are actually honest with each other and how emotional that would be for them, each trying to deal with the loss of their mother. Obviously, it's sad that Eric's not all there, but also appreciatively realistic. Hawkeye didn't seem to have residual effects, but then he wasn't mind controlled for nearly as long. Selvig was at least being influenced at the end of Thor and then all the way through the end of the Avengers, which is at least a year, so you're not just gonna bounce back from that. I've had a god in my brain. One positive side effect, no amount of birds going all Hitchcocky can throw you. It's never totally revealed whose plan this is, but just the fact that Thor goes along with it again shows how much he's grown. So some might say this is a sin, but since I'd venture a guess that exactly 99.99% .99 of the viewing audience didn't notice what I'm about to point out, it's actually a win since it was hidden so well. But this shot of the ether leaving Jane is actually used earlier by rotating and reversing it when the ether goes into Jane. It was her chest plate that tips me off. Loki, now! Brother teamwork! And saving your evil brother! Even though Loki can make it hard to love him sometimes, he does protect Jane twice in this sequence. Finally, someone who can go toe to toe with Thor. Stuff like this is what gets me excited for Ragnarok. Even Loki's picked up some new skills since the first Thor. Brutal! No, that was brutal. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Man, didn't expect to get a lump in the throat over the guy who tried to rule Earth. Feeling sad for Thor, mostly. Still an amazingly performed scene from both men in what feels like, probably not, but feels like a sincere apology from Loki. Probably for past and future slights. I was just wondering if you want to try again. Uh, maybe dinner next time. Successfully hiding your jealousy. So who's Richard? <laughs> the code hook is apparently worthy. Your brother's not coming, is he? Loki is dead. Oh, thank God. I, I'm so sorry. Sympathy. The Chinese, the Egyptians, they made use of the gravitational effects of the convergence. So I know I said that Apocalypse was the most realistic explanation for the pyramids, but gravity that does this would make building all those structures pretty easy. I better get my pants. You get your hammer, I'll get my pants. So that's like a being prepared win? So just park anywhere? How's, a, how's under all this concrete? Lawn's fine? Thanks. Again, even though these ships are so impractically designed, they sort of have a sword-like shape that clearly strikes fear into the hearts of all the puny humans. And they definitely have a consistent technology feel to everything Dark Elf, even if that ramp came out way too fast. Have some showmanship. I like how even super-powered fights start the way most drunk street fights do, with just two idiots pushing each other back and forth, unwilling to actually throw a punch. What the hell just happened? <laughs> Appropriate reaction. Thor out there, he's waving his hammer around and everything! And yeah, everyone knows about the Avengers now, so when there's a showing in your town, you don't miss it! Once Thor and Malekith really get into it, the finale face-off starts to get really entertaining, beating each other back and forth through portals. And the portals randomly appearing was set up earlier. The walls between worlds will be almost non existent Physics is gonna go ballistic. Increases and decreases in gravity, spatial extrusions. The very fabric of reality is gonna be torn apart. <laughs> and Mjolnir leaving Earth to try to get to the Dark Realm, doubling back and then shattering all the glass. Ah, good stuff. <laughs> Finally get to see one of those beasts actually kill something for once. <laughs> Into the rescue. Darcy? Jane! Mia! Uh, Selvig! Mia! It's a tad meta, but it's something that actually works in the MCU. Thor doesn't belong. He does look weird on public transportation, but that's in-universe true. So, you know? He wants to destroy Mordor too? It actually makes sense though. Hell is probably way too bright. I've come to accept your surrender. <laughs> Call back to his own joke that only he could possibly chuckle at. And I like to think that on the inside, he is chuckling. I mean, yup. One of the most awesome ways Thor can dispatch a giant foe hammering a giant spike into a giant with his giant and mighty hammer. 
And come up it's. Even the ether knows to ditch you and leave you right back where you started with all the elves you so nobly sacrificed. Everybody okay? Yeah, so long as you don't count Greenwich as part of everybody. Hey, even Maverick and Iceman made it back from Hogan's Realm. It belongs to you, if you are worthy of it. Not like you could lift it anyway, Loki. But another case of an actor channeling Loki pretending to be himself. If I were proud of the man my son had become, even that I could not say. You know, clearly Loki has ulterior motives, but he's saying some pretty nice things to his brother and leaving some nice memories of his dad for Thor. This time we get some sick oil painting art to look at before the stinger. Ooh, this was exciting. And I'd be the first to admit that I knew nothing about the Guardians. But Benicio Del Toro? Hmm, wonder if I could grab onto that and survive. Hmm, purple is more my shade. Post credits, love. And someone's getting a new pet! You know what? Sometimes it's good to be reminded that not everyone always has a heart of gold deep down. Sometimes I like my villains to be born of darkness and want to return the world to darkness and light just makes them sad. I personally still believe everyone could be redeemed, but some baddies just want to burn the forest down. So I don't hate Malekith, but the realization that it's Chris Eccleston does make me a little sad, because it does feel like the things that make him a great actor were hidden. When your main attributes are hates light and things existing, really into darkness, nothingness, and the cursed, it's tough to come off multidimensional. That said, he still did an amazing job. But actually the first thing I noticed was the lack of Dutch angles. Sorry Kenneth Branagh, I loved so much of what you did with the first Thor, but Alan Taylor allowed me to keep my head stationary. So... And then the second thing I noticed, or was an improvement, was getting Thor as Thor, the God of Thunder. It was extremely satisfying to pick up where Thor and Avengers left off with a fully functional and powered up Thor which led to some amazing scenes. This one in particular, I can remember happily chuckling to myself when I saw it in theaters. And Asgard is still as beautiful as we left it, if not more stunning. It was nice to see some of the other sides of the city that haven't been dipped in gold. I don't remember sparky weapons in the first Thor, but it's a cool little touch either way. My favorite part of this film was the brother story thread. Getting to see Thor and Loki work together, more so on Loki's terms, was satisfying. I just like when people get along. Especially people who are estranged or were trying to kill each other in the last film. Hemsworth, without a doubt, kills his side of the story. But we sort of always know where Thor stands since we've spent so much time with him, even if he does occasionally surprise us. I will say he's grown immensely as an actor alongside his character, and his somber, subdued attitude makes you love him all the more. However, Hiddleston does again steal the show. Everything he does can always be interpreted multiple ways. He really encapsulates the god of mischief. He plays it so well that I don't think his plans, motives, or emotions are ever mutually exclusive. Meaning he really did love his mother and is willing to team up with Thor to get vengeance. But if that opens up a path to the throne by faking his death again, then so be it. I also think he loves his brother, but who knows who he's talking about in this scene. I didn't do it for him. Probably Frigga, but it could even be himself. He's always got a smile on his face and no matter how tense or serious the situation, he plays it cool as a cucumber. I've been sort of doing my best to avoid Ragnarok trailers, at least the more recent ones. It's a general rule for me. If I really like the teaser and first trailer, there's really no need to see the ones that start giving everything away closer to release. Anyway, point is I've gathered that Loki is at least in the film and probably works with Thor. And re-watching them work together here has gotten me even more excited for Ragnarok, even if it is more of a comedy. All Marvel movies kind of teeter on the line between comedy, drama, action, sci-fi, fantasy. Mm, that's a lot of genres. Anyway, The Dark World is no exception. It's not the most usual thing to have the comic relief be female, but Kat Dennings always gets a juggle out of me. Are those the car keys? Natalie Portman had a bigger role in the plot this time, obviously, being the ether vessel. Always a smart move to have her be more than just the love interest. I like this movie. I can admit it isn't perfect. It has some weird pacing and structural issues. It doesn't seem to go in the direction you expect, and three quarters of the way through it sort of still feels like the movie is setting up. Sometimes it feels like a bunch of rewrites with leftover pieces from other drafts. That said, it's still an enjoyable Thor story with a great relationship narrative at the center, and the ultimate goal of introducing the second Infinity Stone was accomplished. The assault on Asgard was probably the highlight of this film, which is partially why the pacing felt weird, but from Heimdall killing a ship with some swords and the knife ship crashing into the Great Hall, to Frigga's funeral and Loki smashing his furniture were some of the most fun and moving scenes in the MCU. Have I mentioned I'm excited for Ragnarok? If one-tenth of the feelings the trailers have given me are present in the film, I'll be satisfied. And if not, I'll just watch the trailers. I already showed the frame for next week, last week, so here's my little dude Jude chilling. He's my intern. You have an intern? The intern is excited. Ian. The intern says it this way. Ian, my name's Ian. He's my intern. My intern's intern. I'm uh, Ian, by the way. Darcy's intern. Darcy? Jane! Yeah. Sylvie! Mia! Mia.